how do you align that? I mean, in business, so you're developing as a coaching leader, you're bringing someone up that you you really believe is going to make a great leader. How those that power of expectations? How do you do that? And you've touched on it, right? Because you want it, you want that discomfort there. You want to get them outside their comfort zone, but you also want to make it a place where they can take chances, fail, and they're there. You're there for them. You can also support them. But what? How did you go about doing that? I'll give you a good example, as 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 you probably mentioned. I still work for Comcast, but I stepped out of my role as president of Comcast West. I did that for 11 years. My replacement was someone that I developed who had worked for me for 10 years. And he is now the president of Comcast West, which was a very proud moment for me, certainly for him, but certainly proud for me. But always start with getting to know the person first. Let's get beyond business. Tell me about you. Tell me about your hopes and dreams. Tell me what you envision for your life. What kind of relationship do you want to have with your family and your Mm -hmm. kids? What's your greatest hope for them? Because Ed, once I start to understand what's important to you, what are your goals, what motivates you, then I start to shape our conversations around helping you reach your goals. Mm -hmm. Now, if you say, look, Steve, I'm good. I don't, you know, my goal is not to be the CEO of the company. I just want to be a great employee and a great dad then great. There's no problem with that. But everything first starts with, you know, who are you and what are you trying to get done? Then the second thing is that we work very clearly by objectives. What is it we're trying to accomplish? We define success early and often. What does success look like? So there's no misunderstanding around what winning looks like. In basketball, it's pretty straightforward. Do you have more points Then the other team at the end of the game, it's very clear. But in business, it's not always as clear. So you have to go to great lengths to define success. Once you've defined success, then you lay out a plan. Okay, let's talk very candidly now about your strengths and weaknesses. Because if I did number one right, if I developed that relationship with you, Ed, and I've developed that level of trust, even when I'm giving you difficult feedback, you know it's coming from a place of love. You right. know it's coming from a place that you only have my best interests at heart. Right. And so now we develop a plan. And then number four, you provide feedback early and often. The positive with the opportunities. And I always try to outweigh the positives with the opportunities. So I always talked about the four or five things they were doing really, really well. And then I pick one or two things and really focus on that. And the goal was not always to make those weaknesses go away. It was to neutralize them. So therefore, when you neutralize the opportunities, it allows the strengths to show up even more. I'll give you-